Well, hi, Shirley and families. Happy Wednesday. I hope that you are well. Uh, we are continuing our story, Blotch, A Tale of Forgiveness and Grace. If you haven't kept up with us, we have read chapters one, two, as well as chapter three. Uh, so if you would like to catch up before you watch this, uh, feel free to head over to our website, shoreline.church, and under the Family Resources tab, you will find uh, part one and part two. Uh, part one, I read chapters one and two, and part two, I read chapter three. Uh, but if you would like to continue with this video, I'll give you a really brief overview. Uh, so chapter one, we meet Blotch. Uh, Blotch is a little boy who wants to know how to get rid of his stains. Um, and so he is on a mission. He's on this journey to figure it out. Chapter two, we meet uh, the people of Hyderville. And the people of Hyderville, what they do is they just cover their stains. Uh, they pretend that their uh, skin is perfect, uh, that they are perfect, that they are superior to everybody else in every possible way, uh, until Blotch realizes that all they're doing is covering their stains. So Blotch hurries and gets out of that town and makes his way to another town called Pretend Town. And in Pretend Town, you probably guessed it, they just pretend that the stains don't exist, even though they're clearly there. Uh, Blotch sees them. Blotch uh, wants to know why they're pretending that they don't exist. Uh, but that's just the way that they want to cope with um, their marks. They don't really want to know why, how, where, when, they just would rather pretend that they're not there. So Blotch gets out of there and he is making his way uh, towards the king. Uh, and so in chapter four, we pick it up, uh, the pointers. Blotch woke early the next morning before his friends or anyone else in pretend town was awake. He was eager to continue his journey and find an answer to the problem of the stains. As he rolled up his sleeping bag and packed his backpack, he thought about the people he had met so far and shook his head. I wonder if anyone anywhere knows how we can get rid of our stains. Surely the king can help me. As he walked down the road, that early morning, Blotch thought about his mother, father, and brothers. He imagined how wonderful it would be if he found the answer to the stains. He daydreamed of what a happy day his family could have if each one of them were finally clean. But Blotch had found no answers on this journey, and the people he had met so far only made him worry he might never find answers. But this was no time to give up, because just ahead was another village. Maybe someone there could point him in the right direction. Long before Blotch made it to the village, he could tell this was no ordinary place. From a distance, he could see that the village was divided by a wide street running all the way through town. Even though the street was wide open, there was no one on the street, but there were lots of busy people on either side of it. Reaching the edge of town, Blotch was walking right down the center of that wide open street when he heard a voice from the left side of the road. What are you doing out there? Get over here, quick! Blotch looked to his left and saw that the voice came from a young man who had more stains and even the people of pretend town. But Blotch walked over to the side of the street just as he was instructed. I, I'm sorry, Blotch said to the young man. Is it wrong to walk on the street in this town? Well, there's nothing wrong with walking on the street, but I wouldn't do it, the young man said. It's just not safe. Not safe, repeat, repeated Blotch. That was all he needed to hear. Well, I won't be here long then. I'm just on a journey to see if anyone knows how to get rid of our stains. The young man narrowed his eyes and looked right at Blotch. 
getting rid of our stains, eh? I don't know about that, but I do know where they come from. He snarled his lip and pointed to the other side of the street from those people over there. Just then, a new stain appeared on his pointing hand. See, I told you, he said, nodding at the new stain. Welcome to Point City. One person giving stains to another person didn't sound right to Blotch, but he decided to follow his new friend back to his neighborhood, just in case. The young man started to explain. For a long time, we didn't know where the stains came from until one day we realized the people on the other side of the road were giving them to us. Can you believe that? That actually is pretty hard to believe, said Blotch. I thought our stains came from the things we did wrong. Even if other people could give us stains, why would they? I have no idea, my friend, but those people are sneaky and they are good at staining us. Every time I think about it, I just want to punch someone in the nose. As he finished the sentence, another giant mark appeared on his arm right in front of both of them. See, you see, it did it again, he cried. He pointed across the, uh, across the street and screamed at nobody in particular. It's all your fault. Blotch stared wide-eyed at his new friend. After the young man had calmed down a bit, Blotch began. Have you ever thought that, well, that maybe you might be wrong? Blotch watched the young man's face redden again. Blotch spoke more quickly now. See, I don't think the people across the street are causing your stains. I don't think they could put stains on you even if they wanted to. The young man looked at Blotch with big eyes, but didn't say a word. So Blotch continued. I believe our stains come from someone else. See, they actually come from us. Blotch watched as several new stains appeared over the man's face and neck. You're one of them, he finally shouted. I can't believe I brought you over here. You're one of them. He was jumping up and down and pointing at Blotch. People from all over his side of the street started running toward Blotch and pointing to, he's one of them, they joined in, he's one of them. Everywhere Blotch looked, people were running at him, snarling, shouting, and pointing their fingers. He didn't know what to do. So he ran in a panic to the other side of the street. Blotch hoped that the people on the other side of the street might be nicer might protect him from the mob he just left behind. But as soon as he crossed the street, the people from the other side started pointing and shouting and calling him a stain thrower. They were just like the people he was running from. Blash didn't know where to go, so he ran back to the center of the road while people from both sides stood on the edge, pointing at him, blaming him, for stains that were their own fault. Without looking back, Blotch ran away from Point City as fast as he could. So now we, we have some questions to help facilitate some conversation between you and your kids. Um, I hope that you find these questions helpful. Um, I'll, I'll read through some of them and, and maybe give uh, some of my thoughts as well. So the first question, when has someone blamed you for something that wasn't your fault? Have you ever wanted to blame someone to get out of trouble? Oh man, 
I just thinking back to my childhood, thinking back to uh, blaming things on my brothers to to try and get out of trouble, and it and it never worked. It was it, it was always on me. Uh, it was my fault um, in in trying to blame it on them. Made it so much worse uh, for me. God's word says that we can't measure our lives by anyone else's life. Why does he want us to focus on our own lives? Well, we are so far from perfect. Uh, We will never be perfect. But if we concentrate on our own lives and if we concentrate on growing our relationship with Jesus uh, and making sure that uh, what we are doing is is good and right and wholesome, uh, that uh, we become a reflection of God. We become a reflection of Jesus. And, and just by us being ourselves, people can uh, potentially catch a glimpse of Jesus through the way that we act and treat people uh, and, and so I, that's why I think it's really important for us to uh, make sure that we are cleaning up our own house before we ever attempt uh, to go next door and see if we can't tidy up somebody else's house. And then the final question, God doesn't want you to be a pointer, not just because they were really rude and mean, but is there anything in your life that you want to be honest with God about? So instead of pointing at somebody else and saying, because somebody did this to me, this happened. Because somebody said this, this was the outcome. Instead of pointing your finger at somebody else, what if you paused? And there was something that you needed to share with God. Would you pray about it? And if you feel so bold, kids and and parents, would you confess it out loud? Parents, again, this is a fantastic way for you to model for your kids. Confessing our sins. Because when we confess our sins, We get to enjoy all of the blessings that God has bestowed on us. So tune in next Wednesday for another reading of Blotch. Blotch is going to make his way to the king, and I think he might just get his answers. Uh, Also stay tuned for our Sunday uh, Bible video reading. I hope that it has been helpful and enjoyable. Lauren and I would love to hear from you guys. So send us an email, uh, reach out to us. How can we be praying for you? What else can we be doing for you as a family during this time? I hope you guys enjoyed. God bless. And I will see you virtually on Sunday. Thank you. Bye.